Hey everybody, and today it's Old Man Banjo back with you. And I wanted to recap some of the things I discussed in my previous Dragon Age Veilguard vale video. I got a lot of very intelligent, lovely comments on the video, and I really enjoyed the debate and just, you know, reading and interacting with people. But as I read the comments to that video, it became pretty clear to me that certain people didn't understand my argument exactly because they didn't understand what I meant by the weakening of RPG systems. In fact, I had one person comment, the game is still about the story. How can you say it's not an RPG? So I want to break down briefly in this video the history of how we got to gaming RPGs and where they started and what makes something an RPG. Obviously, these things are always up for debate, but I want to give a general definition of what an RPG is so that we can better understand why I think a game like Veilguard shows a weakening of its RPG-ness or RPG systems. So RPGs find their beginnings at the end of the 19th century with things like Kriegspiel or literally wargaming. These would then be popularized by authors like H.G. Wells, who wrote a book called Little Wars, which basically gave children rules to play with their toy soldiers. These systems would continue to develop for years and years and years. And by the time we get to the 1960s and 70s, we begin to evolve from tabletop wargaming to role-playing games, where the types of systems that are used to govern an entire battle with hundreds of soldiers start being used to control one or a few characters with more detailed mechanics to control those individual characters and their interaction with the game world. You can best liken fantasy role-playing to uh, a cross between let's pretend, cops and robbers, and improvisational theater. So by the 1970s, we have Dungeons and Dragons, Chainmail, along with a load of other tabletop role-playing games. Tabletop role-playing games being distinct from war games by the aforementioned focus on a single character. The big difference here is that instead of worrying about the statistics and movement of battalions, you need individual stats per character, strength, charisma, magic spells, ability to persuade other characters and interact with the game world in a more personalized and individual way. And it is the complexity of these gaming systems and the player's ability to interact with those systems to role play a character. That's what a role playing game is at its core. It is the game systems that put restraints on your imagination so that you can be immersed in that world and role play that character. Now, obviously, in many cases, people don't actually role play their character. You can role play a battleground in Dungeons and Dragons and be completely out of character the whole time, but still be enjoying role playing game systems. Likewise, you can have a narrative game, something like the Telltale games, that is entirely narrative based, but does not have role playing systems. The point I'm trying to get at is that something is or is not an RPG is something like a spectrum and how far something is on the spectrum of definitely being an RPG is largely determined by how complex and RPG like its systems are. This is important because with the rise of computers, we started to see people take these tabletop rules and turn them into computer games. In the West, we had studios like Strategic Simulations making Dungeons and Dragons games, Bard's Tale, Eye of the Beholder, and over in Asia, we would eventually have Yuji Horii making Dragon Quest and Hironobu Sakaguchi making Final Fantasy, creating the JRPG genre. While games like Boulder's Gate would go on to directly imitate pen and paper rules, other RPGs like Final Fantasy would create their entirely own set of rules, for example in Final Fantasy V with the job system. But what unites all of these different games from Final Fantasy VII to Baldur's Gate 3 to Fallout 3, it is not the game's narrative aspects in and of themselves that make something an RPG. The Walking Dead by Telltales is not an RPG because it doesn't have the ability to express yourself in the game using the systems of a role-playing game. Dark Souls, on the other hand, is a little bit more of a role-playing game with some action elements because its RPG systems are richer and you can see an evolution where those RPG systems become richer from a game like Dark Souls 1 to Elden Ring, where there's a lot more choice in character development, at least in my opinion, kind of a sidetrack, but you get my point. While there is no absolute answer on when something becomes an RPG or stops being an RPG, we definitely can talk about something being more of an RPG 
or less of an RPG, just like there's no absolute answer as to when someone becomes bald. We can only say that someone has more hair or less hair. It's not the loss of any one particular hair that makes someone bald, just as it's not the loss of one single RPG system that makes something no longer an RPG. So when I say that Dragon Age Veilguard doesn't look like much of an RPG to me, or I talk about the weakening of RPG systems and the war that AAA developers have had on RPGs over the past two years, I'm not being hyperbolic. There literally has been a war by a lot of AAA dev studios, given a belief they have about who these systems will appeal to, namely white fat dudes who are nerds, that they don't want these systems in their games. I'm not arguing the obvious absurd claim that no one makes RPGs anymore, which is obviously clearly false. I'm making the argument that what makes an RPG is the complexity of those systems, and those systems have been weakened over the past two decades. Why? Because AAA studios have a false belief about gamers. Big surprise, they do this a lot. And Dragon Age Velgard seems to be a victim of that from what we've seen so far. In the end, I will wait for a more full breakdown of the character progression in the game. Also, keeping in mind that a game with weak RPG systems can still be good. Dark Souls has weak RPG systems. Mass Effect 2 also has some reasonably weaker RPG systems than other games Bioware has made, and I love Mass Effect 2. So, it's not entirely discounting the idea that Veilguard could still be a good game. I'm not implying that. What I am saying, and it's sad to see, is that these AAA game studios don't seem to be well informed about what gamers want when we look at the actual data of the sales for things like Baldur's Gate 3. I do not think, as some people commented in that last video, that Baldur's Gate 3 is a flash in the pan. Not when I talk to ordinary gamers, the sort of people that don't watch commentary videos on YouTube. The people that I talk to who on you know, the man or woman on the street, they really loved those RPG systems and to be introduced to them was really mind blowing. And I think once AAA studios see that they might reevaluate this myth, we can only hope. But at the moment, the trend is absolutely undeniable that almost every franchise that used to be an RPG besides Baldur's Gate 3 has now transformed into something that is less RPG like in its systems complexity. You only need to look at the RPG level of complexity in Fallout New Vegas and the role-playing systems that allow you to go out into the wasteland of New Vegas and express yourself, and then compare that to the systems in Fallout 4, and then compare that to the ability to express yourself in Starfield. It has been a slow decline. Bethesda have done it. EA have done it with Bioware and other companies they own. It's just a steady progression. Will Baldur's Gate 3 halt it? I don't know, but when I say there's been a war by AAA developers on RPGs, I really do mean it. They really have wanted to remove the genre from the mainstream on these set of assumptions. It's it's a real thing. It's, it's not hyperbole. Um, if you games back in the early 90s, you'll remember we had these kind of RPGs flooding out. I mean... We all remember the famous ones, but if you were like me and you just pick up a game like Birthright the Gorgon's Alliance or uh, some of the old like reprints of the Bard Tales games, th there were CRPGs and JRPGs flooding the market. JRPGs have survived because the Japanese market is more immune to some of these changes. But in the West, other than Baldur's Gate 3, I know a lot of people are going to say, yeah, that's uh, that's not a AAA game, but it is in terms of its budget. If you actually look how much money they spent on it, it it's definitely a AAA game. The voice acting budget for that game alone is insane. And it shows that if you do put the time and effort into RPG systems, hey, they pay off with the players because the players are not as stupid as the executives at the gaming companies think the players are. If you enjoyed this video, please do like and subscribe if you want more commentary content on RPGs, rants, reviews, and stuff. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.